Nolly in orange, and Super Lucky in the blue. It commences best of five. Super Lucky, the number one player in Australia, the number one player in OCE right now, against Nolly Genji. Nolly, who's um, in, well, in many people's uh, minds, the number one team in the world at the moment with uh, Genji. They've had a bit of um, an argument with Carmine Corp, a bit of an argument with FaZe as to who the true number one team in the world are. And Nolly's a, a proven ones player on my stream. He's beaten players like Drally when Drally was in his prime. Um, well, obviously Drally's not reached his prime yet. But you know what I mean? When Drally, when Drally was farming everybody, Nolly actually took him down. So Nolly's a proven ones talent um, in the European region. And now he's playing the number one guy from OCE. But yeah, check out. Are you going to need to keep an eye out for Super Lucky and his teammates, um, Fiber and Kaka? at the Major. Ground Zero have qualified as, I believe, the number one seed from OCE to the Major. Um, bit of, you know, a, a bit of drama behind that uh, acquisition, the Ground Zero acquisition of Super Lucky. If you've not been following OCE this split, um, you might remember Super Lucky as a player who, oh my goodness, what a shot that is, by the way. <laughs> you might, might remember him as a player who just hit a flip reset and nolly, but if you've got a better memory than that, you might remember him as a player for Pioneers at the most, uh, uh, well, I think three most recent Lands, the Spring Major from last season, the World Championship, and of course the uh, Fall Major from this season. He played with Banana Head and Scrub, not to be confused um, with Scrub Killer. Um, Scrub, <laughs> a bit of a bean shot there from Nolly, leaves Super Lucky in an awkward spot. But yeah, just to give you guys the TLDR, to give you the short story of the quote-unquote drama, I'm using that because I can't think of a better word. I think they're all cool now. Um, Super Lucky was benched from Pioneers after a very disappointing last place performance at the Fall Major. Um, and Ground Zero immediately grabbed him. He's one of the best players in the region. And uh, after being benched, he actually beat his old team to the number one seed um, and qualified for the Major ahead of them. Uh, his old team have also qualified to the Major, though. You, you might uh, get a chance to see these two teams match up on LAN if things, uh, if the bracket really goes in that world's favor. The new Pioneers player in place of Super Lucky is Hunter, who's a, a new uh, player to the scene in OCE. He's, uh, you know, kind of the new prodigy in OCE Rocket League. So looking forward to seeing how they go at the Major um, with their respective teams. Okay, right now, Super Lucky off to a very good start in the 1v1 against Nolly. It's looking quick, looking like he can match Nolly's mechanics. He's giving Nolly a ton of space here, so this is going to pretty much allow Nolly free reign in whatever he wants to do. Super Lucky with a very early pre-jump, though, might have actually scared Nolly into um, taking that ball a bit lower than he wanted to. Uh, you know, when you've got that much space, you want to get the ball up nice and high. You see players like Daniel do this all the time, you see players like Zen do this. They land resets, flip resets on the, on the air dribble um, close to ceiling height because that allows you to just have so many different angles that you're threatening on the way down. Nolly actually flew a bit lower, probably seeing the Super Lucky had pre-jumped. Um, and uh, it didn't really give him that many angles to work with when he arrived at Super Lucky. Super Lucky here going to again fake a challenge, this time unsuccessfully. Nolly not buying it. At least not buying it hard enough. If he did buy it with that jump, he managed to recontrol the ball and uh, flick it over Super Lucky, no problems. Did we get a prediction for this? So I'm, I'm, I'm you know, going to be honest. My personal prediction, I've got to lean towards Nolly being the favorite here, just because he's got the uh, the one v one show match experience on my channel. I know, I know, it might just sound a bit silly to say, but you know, it it, it does usually result in a bit of pressure on debut players. That's why it's so special when a debut player can come on and really pop off because historically it's not always been the case. Even players who are absolutely world class right now did not debut strongly um, in 1v1. It's so difficult to perform to your best ability with all of you eyes, uh, your eyes watching. Super lucky trying to get this ball accelerated into Nolly's half. It's taking his time though. But, oh my goodness, what an outplay that is. <laughs> a little pop over Nolly is recovering to try and get goal side. And uh, yeah, it looks like he just might have faked Nolly off that one by air rolling 360 degrees underneath the ball. Nolly was it was waiting for the air roll shot, maybe waiting for the flick, and uh, Super Lucky was just baiting him the entire time. A little set up with the wave dash there, bump onto Nolly. Nolly immediately recovers by dodging into the boost, and he should be able to get around this. Indeed, he will. Cuts the goal lead back to one. And so far, Super Lucky's impressed me. He's looking like he's here to play, looking very composed. 
Love that as well. Fake kickoff from Super Lucky. Just keeping the hold of that one goal lead. Keeping a hold of the ball. Another flip reset. Low finish though. And Nolly's done really well with the save. Hitting his own crossbar intentionally to start the counter attack. Now we're 5-5. Five, five. Super Lucky did um, go all in here. No boost left for the recovery. Did I say Super Nolly? I, do, I don't think I did. Maybe I did. Not a bad name though. Super Lucky versus Super Nolly. We need a KV1 versus Zen. Yeah, I, um, I've got, uh, yeah, I've got KV1 versus Zen planned. Do you guys want to know when? I'll tweet it out tomorrow, but I could give you guys a sneak peek um, as to, well, at least what day it's going to be on. Now, Ollie's going to try and seal that fake kickoff from Super Lucky, who sees it coming, tries to flick it over and fails. And Ollie's got a bit of an open net to uh, play with here. Takes his time. For one goal advantage, he doesn't want to boom the post from this kind of range. That's exactly what he's done, though. Luckily, Super Lucky's nowhere near the plate. That'll be a two-goal lead for Nolly. Sneak peek. Yeah, I was talking to Zen and uh, KV1 today about potentially getting them to um, have a one series. Because KV1, just like Super Lucky, is boot camping in the US right now. Um, in preparation for the Winter Major. And that presents an opportunity to get show matches against European players on the U US East server. Uh, KV1 also, I believe, in California right now. Yeah, looking like that's going to be Friday, guys, just to give you guys a heads up. Looking like KV1 versus Zen is going to be on Friday. I'll tweet it out tomorrow, just like I always say. If you want to know when show matches are going to be, um, the best place to find out is on my Twitter. If you follow me there, I'll try my best to tweet them out um, as early as I can. Not a very good time to tweet right now, though. I'll, I'll wait till tomorrow just so that uh, more people see it on the timeline as most of Europe has probably already gone to sleep. And uh, yeah, want to wait and uh, tweet that out when uh, the rest of uh, my followers, or at least the majority of my followers are awake. Yeah, I'll do that tomorrow. I'll, I'll announce the time on my Twitter. Oh, big scoop there from Super Lucky. He's got Nolly in a bit of a bind, in fact. The boost might be stolen. He went for it and misses the win in the race. Nolly shoots first time. I think it's just going to get there. Indeed, it is. Good placement by Nolly. He's up two goals again. Super Lucky going all in there. He almost had Nolly in an awkward position. Uh, it looked like he might be able to win the race to the back corner boost. Just waited a bit too long to go there. Of course, worried about going too early. Look at this kickoff from Super Lucky. Just driving through the ball, letting Nolly hit it to his back corner. Uh, but his, I mean, Super Lucky's, of course. Very interesting kickoff strategies he's brought to game one. Floor pinch attempted by Nolly. He just needs to waste a little bit more time, and game one will be his. It looks like that'll do it. Super Lucky might give it one last dive down the middle, but that first touch is not going to cut it. Um, no pun intended. That'll give Nolly the game one win. Thank you, by the way, as well, to Bake0347. I forgot to say that um, when I was thanking Broccoli Chris for his sub. Um, glad you like the show matches. Hopefully you're still here. Cheers for the three-month prime. Nice ping. Yeah, he's super lucky he's got the server in his spare room by the looks of things. He's got a phenomenal connection here. Yeah, Grand Zero is in, in the US right now, in the US. Preparing for the Winter Major. Very intelligent, very smart to go over there early. Um, you know, besides getting a ton of practice while they're in the US against the uh, other teams who are boot camping. And, you know, other bubble teams in NA, I'm sure, who are um, practicing in preparation for next split. Not even just bubble teams, you know, legitimate teams as well. You get good practice against uh, a lot of teams by going early for a boot camp. That was a really bad 50-50 by Super Lucky. Terrible angle to be taken. Um, easy dunk for Nolly. Easy 1-0. Yeah, the other reason, of course, that uh, Ground Zero and the other teams who are traveling great distances to get to the major want to do that is that uh, they want to acclimatize they want to try and adjust their sleep schedule to the correct time zone and they want to adjust their internal body clocks to the right time zone we talked about that a little bit during the top 25 player ranking stream that I did the other day um, you know some people don't think it makes that much of a difference the whole jet lag thing but I think you know historic results of Rocket League lands um, make it very clear that it makes a big difference um, if you can get acclimatized to the region you're about to be playing in. It's good timing on the challenge there by Super Lucky, but he went a bit too high on it, and Nolly just goes straight through him. Lovely little uh, fake 50 here by Nolly. Notice how he just 
hits the brakes, lets the ball roll off the front of his car, controls the impact, and then walks it into the net. All the Nolly haters looking silly right now. Were there Nolly haters? I didn't really pay attention to the chat at the start of this one, but I'd be surprised if there are many Nolly haters. Nolly's had some good results um, in ones for many years now on my channel. Always been very competitive. Only Ray, thanks 100 bits. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, no, the, I think the reason is Nolly's always quite an effective ones player, despite not maining 1v1 at any point during his career, if I'm not mistaken is that, you know, he's always thereabouts mechanically. I don't think he's ever been the absolute top mechanical tier, um, but he's good enough that he can he can contain mechanical players just fine. Uh, you know, he's also a smart player, so I think he plays positions very intelligently as well. Real test for Super Lucky here, who's going to concede a kickoff goal to go down by three. When is Ruas versus Zen? Um, right now, Ruas is pretty busy with 3v3. There's actually a LAN in Saudi Arabia. I've talked about this a couple times on my stream, but I'll just mention it again for anyone who's not aware. Um, but yeah, there's a LAN right now in Saudi Arabia for the top Saudi Arabian teams, um, spanning three weekends. Two of them have already happened. The last weekend of the LAN is this coming weekend. Um, so I believe the grand final that uh, Ruas team is likely to play in will be this Saturday. After that, I think he's getting back into 1v1 practice properly. And, uh, yeah, we should be able to see a rematch of uh, Zen against Ruas right about then. Oh, that was a great counter-attack and chance for Super Lucky, but he just took a bit too long to get it going. Nice touch there by Nolly. Super Lucky looking to pop the ball on target. Nolly not having it. Nolly's just been getting a better read Every passing minute in this match, it seems like he has a better idea of what Super Lucky is going to do. Um, he's able to consistently counter-attack him. This is not the play that Nolly was hoping for, though. Did he just misread this bounce or something? I'm sorry, Nolly. We have to take a look at what you saw um, on this one. Oh, he thought Super Lucky would seal the boost. Yeah, he thought Super Lucky was going to go for a boost seal there. Um, so he tried to fake a touch into his back corner and then just counter-attack. Obviously, that proves to be quite risky if the opponent doesn't, in fact seal the boost. Great timing by Super Lucky. Notice the dive challenge by Nolly. He's coming back in game two. Started off 0-4. Now he's uh, only down by one goal. Has TRK quit Rocket League? No, TRK's team is also playing in that same Saudi Arabian land and then afterwards they're going to be flying to um, San Diego for the Winter Major. So yeah, they're, they're very busy with uh, 3v3. The Falcons players. Also uh, Ramadan right now in the Middle East, so I think that generally, um, you know, the, the the times of the day, I'm not 100% sure how it works um, logistically, but all I know is that the time of the day that um, people are awake during Ramadan is different uh, than other parts of the year, where um, you're going to likely see Saudi Arabian Rock League players online till late night. Now they can't really uh, do that because they've got to eat, go to sleep, wake up again, eat again before the fast begins. Great flick by Super Lucky. What a way to tie the game. Nolly muscled off the ball at one end and then uh, outplayed at the other end. A bit of physicality, a bit of finesse. Super Lucky brings it back. Yeah, Ramadan fasting. I'm not sure the exact hours, but it's from dawn to dusk. So as soon as the sun rises till it sets, you're not allowed to eat, I'm pretty sure. But a bit longer after it, it sets, if I'm not mistaken. It's kind of like intermittent fasting. I think you've got an eight hour window per day. Or maybe it's, it's, is it a 10 hour window? I can't remember if it's an eight or a 10 hour window. You've got to do all your eating in uh, and drink on any water you're going to drink as well. Oh, nice recovery by Nolly. I think he took a bit of a, a bit of a hit on this. Sunrise to sunset, got it. Yeah, he did indeed, look at that. So he got a bit clattered by Super Lucky midair there, but immediately recovered, kept going towards the ball. And then uh, doubles it in for the one goal advantage. Yeah, Yummy Cheese Man, it's not going well for your boy. He's in a bit of trouble here. Nolly's uh, playing very well. Super Lucky's overextended a few times. Oh my goodness, Nolly actually had one of these hit on him earlier, the reset top shelf flick, and he's done it right back to him. Super Lucky could really use some possession right about now. Delays the kickoff. Looks for the wave dash recovery. He'll actually take the ball away here from Nolly. 
Only flips away from it, giving Super Lucky a free touch. Not the best shot, though. However, it does set up a boost steal. So Super Lucky's still in with a chance here. Didn't spot Nolly's lunging challenge until it was too late. Super Lucky will look to try and trip up Nolly. Oh, it's just got in. That's a bit unlucky for Super, Super Lucky here. <laughs> Apologies again, Super Lucky, but we have to see what on earth happened here. Nolly <laughs> got, Nolly got completely tripped up. That actually just set him up to score. <laughs> That's so unfortunate for Super Lucky. Nolly could have pretty much gone anywhere there, but hey, if Nolly, if, well, if Nolly manipulated that landing um, in any way to actually land where he did, then well played. That's very difficult to control. Super Lucky baited into the back corner again. Nolly nicks the boost before he can get there. Wants a double reset. Wave dash is the landing, wants to bump as well. Super Lucky spotted it, really good vision on that play. That's not an easy one to see coming. And suddenly we've got a game again. Super Lucky on the cusp of going down by four for the second time in the game. Now he's got two goals to make up with 24 seconds left. He's trying lots of cheeky kickoffs here. That was a bit of a blatant um, delayed approach on that one. All he could see him. I'll tell you what though, he's managed to come away with another goal because Nolly overextended into the back corner. Did the, did the chat vote mind the best? If you're talking about lists, chat voted CJ's list, uh, the best list. CJ, when, when he gets his story right, he, he's, he's tough to beat in these settings. Very impressive storyteller. Um, is that gonna bounce nicely for Super Lucky? It's a tough one. Nolly can just fake this and he does. And uh, that's two games in a row, two close games in a row for the Englishman. We're just playing a best of five today, just a very short stream. Um, this was the one hour window that Super Lucky was available today. Kind of fortunately lined up with uh, the exact same time that Genji's scrims finished. So this is all we've got. Uh, the only chance Super Lucky's got, he's got to go in 35 minutes to scrim again, so... Do not have time for a best of seven if it goes the distance with uh, multiple overtimes. What's my favorite country? Um, I love going to Spain. Spain's always a blast. Love, love the food, love the weather. Um, yeah, love, I love Spain. Been in been uh, Barcelona a few times, Valencia, Madrid, Alicante. Been all over Spain. Been to um, Ibiza as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely a, a big Spain fan. Um, yeah, I also love going to Bulgaria. That's where my girlfriend's from, so Bulgaria is always really fun. Bulgaria is like really, really cheap if you go from the UK to, to Bulgaria, much like lots of Eastern European countries. So that's nice. Um, not sure. If, yeah, they're probably like the the top two. They're the places I've, I've been to a lot in the past like five years. Well, maybe you know if you take away the the pandemic years, you know the five years either side of it. Yeah, Spain and Bulgaria, but I've been in both of those places like 10 times each or something. So I guess that just makes them my favorite places, right? If I've been there more than anywhere else. Oh, great result here from Super Lucky. What a challenge. Massive ceiling dunk on to Nolly. <laughs> Did not spot that one in time. Yeah, I went to Lebanon one time as well. That was really fun. Lebanese food was uh, was also phenomenal. Barcelona or Madrid? What is in which one's my preference? Um, if you're talking football team. I don't really care care personally, but about uh, City, I, I prefer Barcelona for sure. That would be my my favorite place in Spain. I need to go back. I might actually go back next month to Barcelona. I've not been there for some time. Nice challenge again by Super Lucky. So he's diving in a lot. Nolly might have picked up on that by now. We've had a ceiling challenge and now just a completely blatant rush challenge. I mean, that was not even an attempt to disguise it from Super Lucky. And I'm not pointing that out to try and criticize him at all. You know, this is something you, you really want to do in your 1v1 games every now and then. Um, if you find yourself on the back foot, kind of waiting for your opponent to make a move quite often in ones, it's probably a good idea to just mix in a rush challenge to your game. If your opponent's seen you fake challenge, full shadow, um, or just sit in your goal three or four times, and then suddenly you just rush a challenge, they're never going to see it coming. It's likely to work. Lovely post-pinch save by Super Lucky. 
The recovery is sufficient as well. Yeah, it's just like everything else in, in Rocket League 1's. Mixing up the game plan, mixing up the kickoffs, the challenge game, mixing up the um, offensive strategy, what kind of air dribble bump you're doing. You know, if Even players who spam air dribble bumps, they rarely go for the same style two times in a row. Sometimes they'll cover a bit higher on the ball, sometimes they cover a bit lower. Um, sometimes they'll you know, start off with a very low approach in the air dribble bump, sometimes they'll go very high. You know, the, even small differences like this can keep the defender guessing and net you better results. Look at this. 5-0, super lucky, passes to himself off the backboard, beats Nolly to the punch, and away he goes. What makes Rawas so good? Rawas just says a oh, nice shot by Super Lucky. Great pass, he says. He's not wrong. Uh, <laughs> the, I think the, the, the difference between Rawas and um, all of the other top tier ones players is that he just has a, hi a higher level of defense. You know, if, if Zen has broken the mechanical barrier for offense, I think Rawas has done that for defense. I think he's exceptionally good at. Um, well, n numerous things, but to list off a few things that Rawas just does to an unbelievably high level, um, a level higher than I've seen anyone else attain. Number one, when he does pre-jump on uh, a dribbling challenge, when somebody's faking a flick and Rawas pre-jumps, you'll almost never see him struggle to get back down to the height he needs to be at to flip into the ball and win the 50-50. Many other players, if, if they get faked out, if they pre-jump uh, expecting a flick and then the opponent just low 50s it instead most of the uh, best ones players in the world will just concede because uh, you know how are you supposed to block a low 50 after you've pre-jumped anticipating a flick um, but Ross is really good at pre-jumping covering the flick and then if he notices they've in fact just faked it or adjusted because of his pre-jump he just gets right behind the ball um, and wins the 50-50 anyway even if the opponent is going for that low 50-50 strategy I love how he, he's able to do that so consistently. Um, yeah, secondly, I mean, the obvious one, he, he holds his dodge a lot for his challenges. A lot of other players will double jump, for, aka fast aerial, um, for their challenges. They'll use their first jump and their second jump to get out quickly, um, and then just try and fly into the ball. Oh my goodness, what a flick by Super Lucky. Get in there. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I, wanted, I just wanted to see that again in the replay. That's why I'm saying get in more than anything else, because that is a peach. Crossbar, down. And then crossbar again, I believe. And then it finally crosses the line. Absolute perfection from Super Lucky. That's the first flick of that caliber we've seen from him today. Love to see more of those. Um, but yeah, Ruas. If those are two things that he's done, really good job by Super Lucky there, spotting the pre jump. But yeah, if those are two things Ruas has done really well, you know, saving his dodge when he's challenging air dribbles to the very last second. Um, I think Nolly's just changing car uh, here. He'll be back in for game three. That's the forfeit. Super Lucky closing the gap. Yeah, third thing, pretty obvious, Ruas pre-jumps. Very, very difficult to play against Ruas pre-jumps. That's like the trifecta of defensive th uh, you know, elements that I think separate him from the rest of the world. Again, summarize, it's uh, defending low 50s af even after pre-jumping, um, saving his dodge to give him strength in his challenges, even high above the crossbars sometimes, and also, yeah, pre-jumping, just really um, using pre-jumps to even scare his opponent away from... Um, going for aerials in the first place. We saw that in the Zen match as well. He, Zen was a bit worried about going for big aerial plays after Rawas has consistently pre-jumped him very, very early. You believe in the reverse sweep? It's not, you know, I, I, I don't think it's just, uh, a really unlikely thing anymore after seeing how close the first two games were and now seeing Super Lucky winning game three pretty convincingly, you know, reverse sweep's definitely on the cards. So key thing for Nolly to really pay attention to at the start of this game um, would be the rush challenges Super Lucky was crushing him with at the start of game three. If Nolly's on the ball in his half, he has to expect Super Lucky to just send it. Um, low 50s are going to be the name of the game for Nolly. Either that or early flicks, early shots to counter the early challenges that Super Lucky's going for. I mean, let's see if he goes for one here. No, he fakes it. And you know, credit to him. Super Lucky's mixing in the fakes. I said some of you guys have got to mix in rush challenges. Super Lucky's in the opposite. He's caught Nolly out of position with multiple rush challenges and now he's faking um, and Nolly's not able to read it. Fantastic stuff by Super Lucky adapting on the fly. Does Nolly have an answer to 
the predicament he's currently in, though that's an awkward pop from Nolly. So if you're lucky trying to keep the threat of the goal alive here, he might have just lost the boost seal. No, he beat him to it. Well, Nolly committed. He thought he could get there. Super Lucky takes it away from him. Wants the double tap, and he gets the double tap. Absolutely beautiful play by Super Lucky. Beats Nolly to the corner boost, and then takes the ball exactly where Nolly can't go. And Nolly is probably expecting a shot there, maybe um, expecting an air dribble dunk. He did not see the air dribble double tap coming until it was too late. Is Arsenal going to be in a show match soon? I'd love to cast an Arsenal show match. Really entertaining player, very unique player. Very talented. Oh my goodness, what shot by Super Lucky. Any, I swear, any time I just go on any tangent, he pops off. This is ridiculous. Look at the rapid fire double reset with a dunk at the end. 4-0. I mean, what happened? Super Lucky was just barely losing, barely losing, and now he's just completely taken over. Nolly's uh, got a long way back already in game four. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, who, who do you guys think would be a good match for Arsenal? I'd, I'd love to cast another Arsenal match. Really entertaining player, very entertaining playstyle. Oh, what a save. Super lucky, denies the air dribble bump with a delayed jump. Rettles, you guys always, yeah, you guys are always going to say stuff like Rettles, aren't you, for this one? I mean, I, I've casted Rettles versus Arsenal before. Um, it was actually a Salt Mine Underground match a couple of years ago with trash talk interviews in the in the pre-match um, hype trailer. It had it all. That, that was a really great... If you've not seen the Salt Mine Underground Arsenal versus Rettles, I would recommend. That was a really, really fun one. They had a lot of uh, trash to talk about each other, even though they were teammates at the time. Yeah, just uh, Salt Mine Underground in general. Definitely content you'll want to check out if you've not gone down that rabbit hole if you're a more recent addition to the Rocket League esports scene or uh, one scene yeah, we've uh, had the pleasure of hosting many of one's tournament an event on my channel over the years salt mine some of the most exciting um, historic 1v1 events to have happened you guys already calling for Nolly to FF well he's got a long way left in this game I don't expect to see a forfeit for a while um I think if he goes inside, if he, if, he, if he doesn't close the score gap in the next 90 seconds, I could see a forfeit happening, but over three minutes to go, why not play on a little bit, see what you can figure out. Even if you don't come back to win this game, it's good to try and download your opponent, at least in some way. You know, for me, I think Super Lucky's just kind of calmed down a little bit, and he's started to perform games one and two. He uh, landed out of position with low boost several times. This third and fourth game, he's a much better boost management. And his execution on his um, aerial plays has been significantly improved. His execution on his ground game has been significantly improved. I mean, when a player does what Super Lucky's done here, but starts to play the same strategy but a bit better, then you've got to elevate your game as well. And all he's going to need to dig deep here. I don't know, he's got the... Big mechanical plays in his back pocket as well. Are we gonna see them? Super lucky. Gives away the ball very carelessly here. Now he's not made this easy on himself though, but that bounce is very kind um, to give him another goal. Super lucky trying to intercept the ball at ceiling height and ended up just passing it straight back to, uh, to Nolly. Arsenal versus Vatira might be a good 1v1 actually. That might be the, the 1v1 where the average boost that both players have from start to finish is a, a, a world record low number. Super Lucky's long shot lacking power. That's a very awkward bounce for Nolly to deal with here. Super Lucky just creeping forward, threatening um, a follow up in that position, but he doesn't really want to. He's just forcing Nolly to clear the ball. Unnecessary jump there from Super Lucky. Thought Nolly was coming to demo him. Nolly just plays the immediate shot. Well, Super Lucky did not keep an eye on where Nolly was there. Big mistake. A great shot by Nolly. The double jump pops it straight into the net. And he's he's coming back. He's down by six. Now he's only down by three. Yeah, I'm pronouncing his name right because they say it differently in, um, in Australia than Scotland. You guys have a different pronunciation, but I mean, it's his name. I'm trying to say it right because it is a real name. 
Um, this has always been, uh, you know, the way I've looked at it for for in-game names. You know, if an in-game name is a real name, we should try our best to say it right, unless it's like a, you know, a name like um, Ahmed, which is very difficult to say for non-native uh, Arabic speakers, including myself. So I just usually say Ahmad, the English version. But yeah, for uh, for an English uh, language name like Super Lucky, I can yeah. I mean, there's no sound in that that's hard to make for a uh, native English speaker. So I'll try my best. Well, Scott in Scott in Scotland, if there's a so would it be Lachlan in Australia? If there's a if there's a Lachlan, would it be Lachlan? Is that how you say it? Um, in Scotland, if there's a if there's a Lachlan, it would be Lachlan. It'd be a ch sound. Lock oh, Lachlan. Oh, yeah, sorry, Lachlan, of course. So, yeah, but it would be a, a KC sign, Lock, right? That's where Super Lucky comes from, because it's a KC sign. Yeah, in Scotland, it would be a Ch sound. So, that's why, um, first time I said his name, I got it wrong. Like, look at this. Where were you guys? You guys were saying, Rolly's got a forfeit? He's not only down by one. Brilliant comeback so far. Can he complete it? And he sent us into overtime. Oh my goodness, Nelly just scooped the ball right across his goal line. So Lucky's just got to be calm here. He's still in the lead. I mean, it feels like he's lost his composure upon realizing that the lead is crumbling. Now Nelly's got a reset and absolutely drills a shot past him. My goodness. What a comeback by Nelly. Now, I've said it many times on my channel. I'll say it again. The biggest comeback I've ever seen in uh, 1v1 that resulted in a win with seven goals but Nolly just equaled the second biggest comeback of all time six goals <laughs> if he can uh, now come back to win this that would be pretty historic oh my goodness super lucky's been he tried to pass it to himself off the back while he clipped the inside of the post it's just all gone wrong for OCE's number one player not a bad idea there to try and pass the ball to himself but of course, if you click the inside of the post, you've just conceded. Now, 10 seconds left for Super Lucky. Will have possession in the back corner. Not an easy position to generate something from. Shoots first time. Nully's in and out saved it. Here comes Super Lucky again. Oh, he can't make up his mind that he doesn't go for the air dribble. He's out here. Oh, that's going to tilt him. I don't think that's much of a rage quit. Yeah, he's just said GG's, but he wants to. Yeah, he just wants to get out of that lobby after driving underneath the ball and doing absolutely nothing um, with it. That's. Oh, that's tough to watch. That's a shame. It wasn't a really, really natural takeoff for an air dribble, but I think he had to go for it there. Just had to go all in, trust his mechanics um, to get the job done. Hesitated a bit and tried to catch the ball instead. It just didn't work. GG's super lucky. Looked like he was about to reverse sweep, and then Nolly said, no, I'm actually the one who's coming back to win this. Six goal comeback. Am I right when I said that? I think it was... Uh, Rob Growley had the seven goal comeback if I'm not mistaken. The biggest comeback in 1v1 history. I'm going to pull it up right now and see. Yeah, 7-0. It was game two. Growley was up 7-0 and Rob came back to win it. So that's Rob versus Growley on, on YouTube. Not on my channel, actually. It's on my editor's channel. Um, it's streamed on Smellsworth's channel, I think. Or is it my channel? I forget. But yeah, that is a equal second biggest comeback in 1v1 um, show match history. Show match and tournament history.